What's up, crew? It's your boy Blackbeard. Um, so I put up a little video about a week ago or so asking uh, if there's any recommendations. I know I've got some in the comments. Um, I do have a couple of videos that I plan on making. Uh, I'm definitely going to do a Daniel Holtzclaw update. Uh, the only reason I haven't really done one yet is because there's not really a whole lot to add. I had a an idea for a video on that where I respond to some of the comments that were made, but you know, I wanted to put out something new, something different. So today I want to talk about a case. Uh, it's not it's a case from the UK back in 1993 uh, that I've absolutely found fascinating, and that's the case. It's the murder of James Bulger. Uh, James Bulger, I think, was about four years old. And he was killed by two 10-year-old boys, uh, John Venables and Robert Thompson. Uh, this was one of the biggest, if not the biggest. If I got any UK viewers, uh, you've probably heard a million stories on this. This was one of the biggest crimes in, U in the history of the UK. Um, I'm not going to go a whole lot into the case itself. I'm going to get into I'm going to give a quick uh, kind of recap to people who aren't familiar with it. And then I'm going to go into why this fascinates me so much. Um, pretty much uh, James Bulger and his mother were out shopping at a mall. And uh, the two kids, uh, Venables and Thompson, were there. They were skipping school. And uh, they kidnapped the boy walked him through town for like a mile and a half till they got to some train tracks and then they threw bricks and rocks at him and pretty much beat him to death um through throwing bricks throwing rocks kicking and they ended up leaving him on the train tracks to eventually get hit by a train uh to kind of cover up their tracks uh it didn't take long before they were caught uh they were tried they were convicted of murder as again they were 10 years old when this happened and this is where it gets interesting to me because the laws in the uk are very different than here in the u.s uh, if this happened in the u.s these kids would more than likely get convicted to massively long prison terms uh they would go to juvie which is pretty much juvenile prison it's the same thing as adult prison but with kids uh, it's violent. It's meant to punish you. Uh, then they would get transferred to adult prison and they could stay, God knows how long. They could have gotten the majority, if not all, of their lives they would have spent in prison. But the UK handles juvenile offenders very differently in that they send to these, uh, it's like these group homes that they go to. I'm going to try and figure out what, see what they're called. Um, As it doesn't really matter. Um, they're pretty much like these boys' homes. Now, they are considered jails for the most part. But, you know, I watched a documentary on on these. And if I can find the documentary, I'll post the link in the description. But these, these homes for boys, um, they're, they're very different than a juvenile prison here in the U.S. There's very little violence. Um, you know, there's a, all, there's full schooling that kids are allowed to, um, it's like a boarding school pretty much. They, there's video games, there's pool tables, there's, they get to go swimming, uh, once a week. And there's this thing, um, where they can, if they've been there for a while, that can actually leave supervised and go on like field trips they can go to museums they can go to sporting events and things like that and um also um pretty much every juvenile offender who commits a crime as a young juvenile is released when they're 18 and this included um venables and thompson and this made the public in the UK extremely angry. These guys brutally, these kids brutally murdered a four-year-old. And by the time they were 18, they were released. They were given new identities and pretty much just let to go on and live their own lives. And people thought to themselves that they, they, they were never punished because these places they were sent never really felt like punishment. It was, they were helping them. And uh, they were trying to help these kids. And then the other side of the argument was, well, you know, 
we're, 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 these are kids that commit crimes. We want to release them as better people. If you just send them into a prison where they're punished, they're going to come out as monsters, as, you know, um, institutionalized adults. You're going to turn these criminal kids into criminal adults. Now, granted, I'm not necessarily referencing Venables and Thompson here, but this is the way that the UK handles this. The, these, these places these kids stay in, it costs a lot of money, and this money is handled by taxpayers. And people say, I don't want my tax money to go to pampering uh, child criminals. However, um, you know, their goal with this system is to rehabilitate, not punish. Now, I don't know exactly how I feel about this system when it comes to these two kids, because I do absolutely understand with the majority of of the people in the UK believe these kids deserve to be punished a lot more than they were and I kind of have to agree with that to an extent um do I think they should have been in prison for the rest of their lives or executed which are very common suggestions for what they deserve no um I, for one, have never been a believer that anybody could do anything as a 10-year-old that could that should potentially ruin their lives. And the response to that being, oh, well, they ruin that four-year-old kid's life. Yeah, but, you know, I don't live in an eye-for-an-eye kind of world, or at least I don't want to. Uh, I don't I don't believe in an eye for an eye. I believe that, uh, you know, we need to make the best possible situation to save lives. And... Um, you know, if we just executed those kids, we'd have, we, we would have three young children killed instead of one. And I mean, that again, I know it's kind of simplistic way of looking at it, but that's the way I look at it. So the interesting part about this case is this happened again, 1993, they were let out, I think in two, I don't know, like 2001 or something like that when they were both 18 and they, and and I always kind of felt like this was a good example to look at the system. Let's let's see if it works, uh, because once they're released, these kids or these now adults are followed. Again, they're given new identities, but they're known. The government knows who they are. They have to check in, and uh, we're gonna find out. So we could find out without actually knowing who they are in today's world, because their identities have been uh, hidden for their own safety. Uh, well, we can find out. You know, how are they doing? Because when something happens to one of these two guys, especially one of them, which we'll get into in a minute, uh, it's released as news. Um, these two kids, now adults, have lived very different lives as adults since being released. And we're going to start out with John Venables. John Venables is a tortured soul, and he's not a good person. Um, he... When I l listen to the interviews that they gave as 10-year-olds um, and stuff like that, when I listen to their interviews as 10-year-olds, as it, it seemed like he was the ringleader. You know, it felt like he was the ringleader when I listened to it. Um, he was very manipulative in his interviews and more Robert Thompson was more just sad that he got caught or upset that he got caught and was afraid of getting in trouble. Or John Venables was like you could feel like he was trying to manipulate um, the the people who are interviewing him. And uh, as an adult, he has now been busted and imprisoned twice for child porn. Now that's really disturbing. And if I'm not mistaken, he's he's either locked up now or he just got out. And every time he gets out, he's given yet a new identity. Apparently, he has a really bad drinking problem. And he would get drunk in bars and tell people who he was, which is not a smart idea. Um, but when you look at John, you think, you know, maybe he was too dangerous to ever be let out. He's obviously has a problem. He's obviously a predator. Child porn is a pretty big red flag for predatory behavior. Um, he had this predatory behavior as a 10 year old and he seems to still have it now. Um, Robert Thompson, on the other hand, is the exact opposite. He was released at age 18, and there has not been a speck of news um, from him at all since he's been released. There's been a few reports that have come in, um, but you can't really trust them because as, as long as he doesn't do anything wrong, the public has no way of confirming that it's true. 
The last thing that I read about Robert Thompson, and again, this might not even be true, is that he is living a happy life somewhere in the UK. Uh, he is openly gay. He is in a uh, committed relationship. I don't know if they're married or not. They're either married or they're cohabitating. He is open to his partner, husband, whatever he is, of his past and of his real name. Um, and he's just living quietly by himself in the anonymity that uh, the government has given him. And you look at that, and when I look at that, I think, well, there's nothing wrong with that. You know, he, he, he committed a, a terrible crime, but he is, uh, was taken away from his home. He was put in this home to kind of create, cor bleh, correct his behavior, and now he's living a productive life. It sounds like he's been rehabilitated. So, you know, a lot of people are going to disagree with me on that one. So I'm kind of, I think it worked for for Robert, but it didn't work for John. And that I don't mind seeing people in general. And now this is kind of a, the way I'm going to wrap this up. In general, I don't mind people being let out of prison who have committed terrible crimes if they were, one, young when they committed the crimes, and two, are rehabilitated and... Uh, really doesn't look like they're going to commit any more crimes. Uh, that's why I have so much trouble with somebody who, you know, somebody who commits an armed robbery at age 14 and gets 50 years. Hell, you know, they, they get locked up 10 years into it. They're, you know, born again. They're doing, uh, they're working at the prison. They're working with uh, troubled youth and things like that. Hell, they got another 40 years to go. But, if they get let out, they're not going to commit any more crimes. They made a stupid mistake when they were a kid. And they need to be allowed to get on with their lives. I think the United States is way too tough on youthful offenders. And I wanted to use this video to bring up another example of another country that does it. And how it could potentially work. Again, I do I agree that, that, that John and Robert should have been let out at 18? No, I, I even with... with uh, with Robert's good behavior, no. I, I think they should have been punished to an extent. Do I think they should have been locked up for life? No. Uh, I believe that John should be now. I think that there should be some kind of carryover with future crimes. That if you're let out, uh, if committing a heinous crime is a youthful offender, if you're let out and you re-offend re in any way, it's kind of like your get-out-of-jail-free card, then you are done. And you need to do some serious, serious time. Um... I, I believe Robert should have been punished more, but I don't believe he should have lost his life. And again, I, I know I'm going to get a lot of negative feedback on that. I'm allowed to have my own opinion. And I believe the U.S. should adopt some kind of system to rehabilitate youthful offenders instead of punishing them. Because if you've ever seen a documentary on an American juvenile prison, nobody's getting rehabilitated in there. They're getting trained for adult prison, mostly because most of them are going to go there and do hefty sentences anyways. Um, anyways, I hope you like the new material, guys. Um, I will get around to making the new Holtz Claw videos soon. I just, I wanted to put something new out there. I feel like this channel only gets any attention from the Holtz Claw videos. I'm hoping to branch out a little bit, and I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. Anyways, this is Blackbeard. I'm out. I love you guys.